So there we go. Uh, this is my first presentation here today, and I want to introduce another server called Casimir. Again, for no particular reason, that name was chosen. And the idea is to highly simplify testing of GPU drivers. So let's all remember our current problem again. I have just retested it with recent revisions and we still cannot install either the ATI driver nor the NVIDIA driver with the setup. I mean, if you extract the files from the setup, you may have more luck but nobody would ever attempt to um, run the installer on a VM because we don't have the actual AMD or NVIDIA GPU there. So the only alternative right now is tedious testing on real hardware. You lose easy debuggability. You always have to burn a new CD. And it would just be great if we had found a way to test them like in a VM. And now I come to something which I call the solution. Here, you, here we have it. We basically have WinDBG attached to a VM and the GPU is attached to that VM. So by the new uh, PCI Express passed through technology, I was able to attach a real NVIDIA GPU to a VM and also makes this kind of comfortable by providing a Windows 7 development VM that can attach uh, over a virtual serial port to the reactor as testing VM. And as you see, this is a real NVIDIA card can show you another screenshot. This is the NVIDIA card um, attached to a Windows Server 2003 VM with the actual working NVIDIA original driver installed. It even works with hardware 3D acceleration, which I've demonstrated by the DirectX sample. So how does, this, does it actually work? I have a small sheet here. So we have the actual Casimir server, which is a standard x64 platform. It supports the uh, Intel VTD technology for PCI Express pass through. And on top of that, I have a Linux Q EMU KVM hypervisor. Um, there are actually two GPUs in that server, one AMD based one, one NVIDIA based one. Right now, I only got the NVIDIA based one to work, but I hope this will also improve in the future. And on top of that, I've already prepared a couple of VMs. So one always for reactor as testing, one Windows Server 2003 VM, which uh, can be used for compar comparison purposes. And all of them are attached to a Windows 7 development VM, which makes the entire setup available over RDP. All of that is actually interconnected. So you can get the serial output from a VM with BG on uh, Windows 7. You have shared folder support over SMB or NFS, whatever actually works in ReactOS right now. And you can also transfer an ISO image to the Reactor SVM to reinstall a new one. So like you compile on Windows 7 and the ready ISO image can just be installed in the Reactor SVM. How does it, does it technically work? So in that server, I have put um, two so-called ERIC KVM over IP cards. KVM here means keyboard video mouse. So, um, you know, when you attach a GPU to a VM, there's no problem getting it usable, but you can only access the actual um, display out screen output over, the cab uh, over a cable you attach to the GPU. So now I needed a way to feed that uh, screen signal back to the VM and make it available in a window. And this is what I do using the Eric KVM over IP cards. 
Um, they basically provide a small uh, web interface with a Java applet. You don't have to care about Java. It's all pre-installed on the Windows 7 VM, which makes it comfortably accessible. And uh, you can just, as I've shown in the previous screenshots, access the screen output of the real NVIDIA GPU like it was a VM. So finally, you also have an answer why a computer ever needs six or even seven expansion slots. So this is the exec server from behind. Uh, you see I have two graphics cards in there. I needed to add another uh, network card and I'm also having these Eric Express cards where the um, VGA uh, signal is fed back from the GPU right into the Eric Express. This is not the only use case I can imagine for Casimir. If you want to tr try out any other real hardware, for example, USB 3.0, I have added a USB 3 card as well to the server. And this is actually simpler to realize because you can still um, use a VM with the emulated GPU of the VM, just as usual. You just have the USB 3 card forwarded to the VM. And well, uh, if that setup is comfortable enough for you, um, I don't mind if you just use it when you right now need a Windows 7 VM for development testing, whatever. Um, it's just available and it is there for help. So, where to find it? It is actually hosted by myself and I will continue to do so because um, that setup needs proper maintenance from time to time. It is highly fragile at times, but uh, I hope to have it available uh, often enough. Um, nevertheless, uh, whoever is interested from the developers or testers may request an account at my site. It is made available um, over uh, another website I have um, implemented where you can just turn it on and off on demand. So uh, it is not running 24 seven and consuming all the power of my apartment. Um, so please just, uh, please turn it off every time you don't use it anymore, but I think then we are good to go with it. So. Thank you for your attention, and now I'm open for any questions. <laughs> so well, we can just try it out in a few minutes, I think. Demo. <laughs> so uh, basically, you go to computers and you have all the details, all hardware details, all necessary steps listed here, and we just power it on. So now it takes approximately two minutes for it to boot up. Here. Okay, so um, let's be here. So this is basically the web interface, password is already there, and right now we have no signal because no VM is turned on. Now I go to Shell and I think And 
instance, there we are booting the actual Windows server. Sometimes the mouse pointer gets out of sync, but synchronize it. And I can show you we're having NVIDIA here with NVIDIA driver. And I can also Isn't real time yet, but you get the idea. So, well, have fun with that.